In 1988, carbon dating tests concluded that the shroud was no more than 600 years old. This seemed to put an end to scientific inquiry into the cloth. Many theories were advanced why the test might be wrong, but few scientists were convinced. Then, microbiologist Dr. Garza Valdez announced a significant discovery, a coating he found on ancient cloth fibers caused by bacteria which can distort carbon dating. In 1996, he tested a few fibers of the shroud and found enough of this coating to skew significantly the carbon dating results. Physicist Dr. Harry Gove is the inventor of the modern technique for carbon dating. This uh, bacterial contamination is something that the people who did the carbon dating were not aware of. In fact, I don't think anyone was aware of it until Garza Valdez discovered this possibility. Even if they had been aware of it, the cleaning procedure that they used would not have uh, taken care of it. So there was no way that they could have um, made an absolutely unequivocal date of the, of the shroud material. With the results of the carbon dating now in question, scientists are already at work finding a way to separate the bioplastic coating from the original linen. When the procedure for separating the cellulose from the bioplastic coating is well established, then I think we would be prepared to offer to uh, do another um, carbon date on the shroud. What, whether the offer would be accepted is, is not at all clear. <laughs> With regard to the carbon dating, there is one more factor which, if it occurred, would definitely have thrown off the results. Radiation. If what I am told by physicists is correct, it's a projected image. And in other words, it's almost as though the body were floating in the middle of the cloth and all of the projection comes off at right angles to the body. This image is directly collimated from the body. That is, it's parallel and parallel to gravity. This is so unique that it has to be explained as a radiation phenomena. And as we rotate back Radiation may be the only way to explain recent findings that the image is like an x-ray, revealing internal structures of the body. Uh, we are seeing the, the bones, the metacarpals, uh, here. Even more striking, as we shift up to the wrist area and rotate back and forth, looking here, we can identify the individual wrist bones on the shrouded turin. We see skeletal features in the depth of the body consistent with some type of x-radiation. And so we feel that the image, other than the direct contact with it from blood and so forth, is basically a, a formed by uh, this a remarkable and uni unique situation of radiation. Superimposing a skull over the face of the shroud reveals internal structures with remarkable clarity. Uh, we can see that we are seeing the images of teeth here. As we shift back and forth, we can see on the shroud, here are the teeth, roots and all, uh, and what is the source of the radiation? Some researchers feel they have the answer to that one, too. I believe this image is on the cloth because of the transformation that occurred during the resurrection. The body transferred from one medium to another, and in so doing, it left a recoil. And it's just such a recoil of particles radiating from the body that marked the image on the shroud. That's why we get the three-dimensional effect and other things. What does that? I don't know. Let alone, how do you get that kind of energy out of a corpse? We will never know if the image on the cloth is Jesus. The fascination itself, though, with the cloth is that it links us, everyone, to um, a death, the death of uh, a person. This shroud is symbolic of the big issues of life after death. Is there a world afterwards? What is the meaning of the shroud? I don't think it's essential to anyone's faith. 
But in that same chapter 20 of the Gospel of John that describes its discovery in the empty tomb, we also have the story of the doubting Thomas. I think there's still a lot of folk around in the 20th century whose spiritual birth certificates are from Missouri. You've got to show me. What kept my attention over all these years is the sheer mystery of it. I feel that there are clues on the shroud that have not been revealed yet, or have not been made evident and clear to people that will tell the story of the shroud and how it came to be. I knew people were going to ask me whether I had any great religious experiences or anything like that. So I sat down about 3 o'clock in the morning, and very quiet, there weren't anybody around, and looked at the shroud and said, okay, how do you feel? What do you feel? Uh, no, I had no great religious experience. Uh, I didn't, uh, you know. But the one thing that kept really sinking into my mind was looking at the face as opposed to the body. The face has a very serene, peaceful look. Uh, and the body is terribly beat up. Uh, the two just don't go together. Our team spent hundreds of thousands of hours. And after that period of time, remembering that our primary goal was to go and determine how the image was formed, came back with nothing. Could not answer that question. So in essence, we can tell you what it's not, but we cannot tell you what it is. Theology should not be in conflict with technology. Reason can never prove the divinity of Christ. Science can't make a theological statement. At best, it can say, this probably wrapped the historical Jesus of Nazareth. But the question that theology asked is, who do you say that I am? No scientific laboratory can answer that one. It's still up to the individual to review the evidence and decide for him or herself just what the Shroud of Turin really is. The Shroud of Turin has made a greater impression on my life than anything else. Uh, it's kept my total attention for over 20 years. Uh, I'm not uh, through with it at this time. Uh, I expect that it will be the major focus of my attention for the rest of my life. <laughs>